Hello everybody and I'm going to do a little video tutorial about how we're going to try to sync our folders between Pro Presenter machines. Now if you're like uh, us we have multiple machines in different rooms and on Sunday morning we do a simulcast so we have a need for certain aspects graphics things like that to be syncing between machines but not everything not both rooms do different music they don't need the same songs so they don't need the the same playlist in each room but they do need the same sermon graphics they do need the same um, videos some different things that have to be sync between the two now we were we tried the internal sync on um, pro presenter and that didn't work I mean it syncs everything we don't want to we don't want to sync everything because like I said some of the times the presentation you know the, the they're different so the uh, the sync that was in Pro Presenter, um, and that, that's under your preferences, and then you go to uh, you know your sync everything here. All right, that that didn't work too well. So we tried the cloud. Um, the cloud seemed to work well uh, for a while until a bunch of very large videos got dumped into the Pro Presenter folder, which then sank to the cloud, and then went to other machines they didn't need to be on, and then our bandwidth got all eaten up and we were looking at a, a bunch of money that we had to pay. So uh, I was found out a little program here called Sync Thing that was talked about in a podcast the other day and I was looking at it and I thought well I'd give it a try. Sync Thing is an open source and it's basically like they say here Dropbox for your network. If you uh, scroll down here they'll talk about um, how it's secure and private and open development and a bunch of stuff that I would rather not even look at um, as far as all the information and it was a little daunting at first but I, I found it's not too, it wasn't too hard to put on the Mac so for Mac Windows you can sync this between different platforms if you go to the downloads you'll see um, a bunch of different ones here I am using the Darwin uh, a version uh, for the Mac so I download the file I unzipped it to my um, uh, into my applications drive. I went to my preferences and I told it to uh, run the program on boot. And when it comes up, this is what it looks like. It's a web interface. It's running, you'll see, on a local server on your machine. And I've got basically two windows here, what they call um, their repository and nodes. Nodes are the computers you're syncing with repository uh, are the folders. Now the nodes are a little hard to set up. Um, when you add a node you need to have um, the ID from the other machine. It's a big giant long uh, number and a name. I had to use a little notepad action and go back and forth between the two to copy all that over. But I added our two machines uh, that we're trying this on right now. And then my local folders and these are folders that I want to sync between the machines but um, just those folders. Now these are set up as hot folders and one library in ProPresenter. So I've got hot folder, hot folder, uh, uh, library, library. Or, or actually it's just these two are libraries, hot folder, doesn't matter. Um, when you set up the repository or folder, um, let's go into the edit window here you'll see that you have to give it a name this name has to be the same on all the nodes and then a path the path doesn't matter the path can be different on each one it's, it's the ID that has to be the same and you've got a couple options here master ignore I'm choosing ignore permissions because we do have things being dropped in from PCs so I want to say that just ignore permissions on these things and sync them and then which computers I want those to uh, to sync with You'll see that on um, this one we have here, I want this one to be the master. So I want this computer to sync to this computer and overwrite what's there, and this computer cannot sync back. So in this particular one, this library, when it's written and syncs, the other computer cannot override the master. So I set that particular folder up that way. Okay? Basically, uh, kind of like any backup program you've ever run. And then of course I've got the um, 
two computers. I'm on East 1, there's an East 2, and then there's a West. So right now you'll see that everybody's syncing. They've got some very basic, um, um, there's some settings here where you can go in and you can change your uh, transmit rate. Uh, I've, I've kicked this up a little bit to be faster on the local network. I turned off universal plug and play. Uh, I, I, you never want a program telling your router what ports to open. I think it's a really bad idea. So I would definitely go in first thing is turn that off. Um, but this can talk outside of your network uh, if you wanted to. Then there's a shutdown and restart. I've got this set to when the computer boots, it automatically starts this and running it. If I click restart, you'll see that uh, I can actually restart this little web server deal. And um, you'll see that it kind of disconnects for a second from the other machines. And then once they all see that they're online again, then I should get um, all green on all of these as they start talking to each other again. Um, what we have set up then, if I go back into ProPresenter, and here's my uh, Sunday sermon um, library that I've got here, and you'll see that I've got a sermon graphics hot folder. So when they come in and make a new, um, tell you what, we're gonna, let's just uh, rename Untitled um, Test. Let me move this so uh, so you can see that a little better. Okay, so I've got my test thing here, and um, I've got nothing in my service and graphics. So, so what we can do now is that the graphics department can pull up on their computer, which I happen to have right here, our sermon series graphics folder on our Pro One machine. And let me just throw a little, I've got a VBS graphic here. I'm going to throw that graphic in. Now that graphic is going to, uh, I just put it into the uh, media folder. There it is. Let's go through and I just dropped it into this folder on the machine. The hot folder in ProPresenter, come on now. Hot folder in ProPresenter just pulled it up. All right. So now I have um, it available to add to my, um, my thing here. So let me just do, uh, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, so let's get rid of test. I didn't like that one anyway. And we'll stick with, uh, we'll call this um, test two. And uh, we'll drop our graphic in there. And um, why does this other one go away? Come on. Delete. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yeah. OK. Who knows why that one's not deleting? Again, I don't know this pro presenter thing. So it, um, it just does what it wants to do. But. Um, now that I've made that, right, I can go ahead and, and, and save that. Now, in the background, what's happening is that the sync thing is, is looking at that folder, right? And it's taking the um, uh, image, not the local videos, but the sermon graph. It's, it's syncing this with the other machines. So let's go look at one of the other machines. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our, um, our East 2 machine here. And if I go look into the uh, Sermon Series graphic, well, there it is. So it is already, uh, let me delete that. It sank the, the file over, OK? And if I open up ProPresenter here, uh, of course, it's got the same hot folder set up. So now that graphic's available in the hot folder on that machine as well. And we'll see over here that. It also sank the library. So here's my test two, and um, they have access to that. Now, what we do is um, this particular library, where we do our sermon notes. You saw the one I just threw away. Uh, they'll come in in the morning, they'll grab that sermon note and uh, save it. If anyone knows a better way to do this, you tell me. But um, out of that library, and then they'll open up their local library that they use. Let's say it's this one drag that in and then put it into their um, you know, into the whatever presentation they're doing. Um, so this sermon notes library is being synced to all the different machines. So they can come in and make that 
And that's the one thing we need to have the same on all our different ones. Now, if I, uh, let me jump out of here. Okay, we'll throw this away. Uh, I'm still on the second machine. What if I throw the graphic away? Uh, now here's something you always have to be careful of because you uh, don't, don't know uh, who's running what on what machines, but let's just say, you know, Joe, who doesn't know any better, went in there and he throws that away. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to sync to the other machine. So if I'm looking at this, uh, let's uh, hide that folder there. If I'm looking at this, this is the uh, sermon graphics on the other machine, on the main one, because they're set to gl sync globally with each other. If we wait a second here, there you go, just disappeared. Um, the file sync. Now that can take, I did a little clever editing there, but that took about a minute on my machine. Sometimes it'll take about 30 seconds, depending, and I guess the file size will have something to do with it, but the sync is not instantaneous. It does take a little time, but the most I've seen that take is like a minute. And then if I look on Pro Presenter here, it, it's already gone out of here. You know, the graphic has disappeared because uh, it was because it was in the hot folder. All right. So I hope that uh, maybe someone finds that useful who are in the um, same uh, position we are with needing to sync some things, but not all things, in the Pro Presenter. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. It was rather easy to set up. If you know a little bit about um, you know, uh, setting up things to run automatically on boot. Um, so give that a try and see if uh, syncing those folders works for you. I guess it could work for anything. I mean, you could sync uh, whatever you want between machines with this as well. Um, real neat program, but hopefully for our ProBrazenter problem, uh, it's going to help us out. Thanks.